And welcome to the Monday Gun Channel's Lock and Load Show. And we're ready to lock and load and talk about guns, freedom, and the truth until dawn. Um, so, uh, obviously, there was a big incident in Texas uh, near where I, I haven't seen Edge on his show, uh, but he lives near San Antonio. And uh, they had a, a, a church, a bunch of people got shot at a church uh, over the weekend. And um, so I, I just really didn't really want to talk about that. But um, I've been on a few chats where, uh, like bushcrafter chats and stuff like that. And I, I have some friends in Europe that I've met on YouTube. And some of them don't seem to understand. They think America has a gun problem. And so I wanted to try and explain this, uh, uh, dealing with um, people that had, didn't, like, I grew up in America, and I could always go down to the local gun shop and buy whatever gun I wanted, you know, anytime I wanted to. So it was never a big deal. It was just, it's in our Constitution. Um, and so, but... A lot of people don't grow up with that that way because they weren't born in America uh, or they live in New York City or something. <laughs> but, um, so I think the, the problem I have is, is kind of simple. If you live in like the UK or someplace where it's pretty difficult to get uh, your hands on a firearm because the, the crown says you're not, guns are bad, I, I'm, I'm trying to explain to you what our Second Amendment freedom actually is. So uh, I'm going to do it like this. This is like Costco peanut butter, right? So if, if let's say you're in Britain and the Crown said you can't have peanut butter, and you grew up your whole life, and you've never had peanut butter. You just have tea with jam on toast. And you've never had peanut butter, All right? So what I'm going to do, this is Costco organic. It's the creamy kind. So if you've never had peanut butter, and a stir to the creamy one, and I'm, you want me to explain to you what Second Amendment freedom is, okay, well, it's just like I have to explain to you what peanut butter is, right? So this is peanut butter. My it's peanut pretty, butter does not run like that. Yeah, it's kind of the oily part is still on the top, but okay. This is the uh, creamy kind without any, you know, it's not the crunchy peanut butter. But it's explaining to somebody who's never had peanut butter. Oh, what it is? You got took by the word organic. I was rolling. Somebody now, seen you, that? Somebody seen you coming. I went to Costco and I picked up some peanut butter for my preps. And this is what they had. I mean, they have Jiffy there too, probably, but the Kirkland brand is less expensive. You've seen the word organic and you got took. I think you're missing the point is that if you've never had peanut butter and you don't know what it tastes like, it's kind of hard to explain what it is. You're just going to have to taste it to find out what it tastes like. So that's, the, I think, the problem I've had, because in Europe they've heard that people in America have a gun problem. And I don't think we do. It's like we don't have a peanut butter problem. I mean, if you eat too much peanut butter all at once, it might kill you. I don't know. But... <laughs> uh, it's like, uh, it's just you've never had peanut butter. So it's hard for me to explain to you. You would have to visit America, breathe the free air, and uh, maybe find some NRA member to take you down to a gun range and, and rent a gun and go target shooting for a few days. And um, it's just difficult to explain what peanut butter is to somebody who's never had peanut butter. So I thought I'd ask the panelists, if they could explain what the Second Amendment freedom is to, like, somebody who didn't grow up in America.
Um, it's like having a donut with coconut sprinkles instead of a plain donut. <laughs> you mind explaining that a little further because I don't understand what that means. Uh, Besides, no. you're not allowed to eat jelly donuts, aren't you? I never saw a jelly donut in any chow hall once ever. <laughs> well, I think after Full Metal Jacket, they banned jelly donuts in the Marine Corps chow halls. <laughs> Oh, great. Here comes the gardener with his blower. I'm going to mute that. Dusty, maybe you can take a better stab at explaining freedom. I don't know. I kind of like Squibb's answer. I like jelly donuts. But that no, wasn't what um, he, he, didn't, he didn't mention jelly donuts in his answer. Yeah, my answer was weak. <laughs> It was weak, but it was it was right. You basically said the Second Amendment allows us to have anything we want to have. If we want sprinkles on our donuts, we can have sprinkles on our donuts. That was probably a good answer, even though you don't think it was. Maybe what I would say is... In the news, all you hear is the bad and you don't hear the good because the good doesn't get people's attention. Maybe there's a feel-good story where somebody got adopted or somebody saved a, a, an animal from a burning building. Like if, if it bleeds, that doesn't get on the news. If it right. bleeds, it leads. But for the most part, 9 out of 10 stories are just something bad. So if you've never been to America and you've never lived this lifestyle and you've never had freedom and you've never handled a firearm, then you probably just believe what's in the news and the news gets it wrong a lot and the news isn't going to report. Time. Well, the news isn't going to report when somebody uses one to defend themselves. That's not news to them. Well, for the most part, you're right. And it's just like the shooting we had yesterday. We'll use a good example. What did the neighbor do? He ran home and got his rifle and started firing away. Okay. And he probably saved lives, which the news will not report how many lives he saved. But he also then, he went and chased the guy in his own vehicle. I think it's a good situation. I think that's what this country needs, is more of that happening. Or if you look at when Sean was down in Houston... Uh, helping those people uh, rescue people out of their homes. He's riding around on the back of a of an LMTV uh, in in six foot of water, and they got boats from the uh, was it the uh, Cajun Navy, and they're taking fire from people that are trying to steal their boats. So him and a bunch of other guys brought their guns to protect the National Guardsmen and 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 all the volunteers that were in there, first responders, and uh, they they did what they had to do to uh, protect the rescuers or like in Arizona, when that uh, cop was being assaulted on, I think it was I 10 uh, in the middle of nowhere. And the guy pulls over and he tries to stop it and the guy won't stop. So he goes and gets his gun out of his car and he had to put down the attacker because he was, he was beating that cop to death and saved his life. There's three examples this year alone of somebody using a firearm to protect other people. And very little of that is in the news or it's in the news for a very short time or that stuff probably doesn't make it over to England or other places where they think we're a bunch of cowboys. No, and you're exactly right. Well, but there, those are all there, there is a media filter that people get their information through. And it's, so it's hard to explain uh, what it's like living in America uh, where there is access to firearms to somebody who's never, ever been here. It just looks like, maybe it looks on the media like we're all crazy. Well, um, it is in the lobby. I was talking to Travis. You, you go into the lobby? His family okay. carries it. Just, okay, hear me out. 
he carries to church. Well, turns out he's from Michigan. And really, it's a firearm into it. Are you but, roboting or is it me? No, he's roboting. It's, it, it's okay, Dusty. When when you're roboting, you know how it is. You 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 can't hear it on your end, so I know what it's like at least. Okay, well, what do, do I do to correct it? Yeah, I, there's nothing you can do to correct it. Log off and log back on real quick. I can tell you, there's there's uh, there must be some sort of cell phone dead zone in Commerce Township because I was roboting on Sunday. Okay. Uh, so, Dusty, were you going to talk about the law in Michigan that lets you bring a gun to church? I mean, for his, in Michigan, it's illegal to carry in a church. A no, church it isn't. is a safe zone. No, you can carry in a church if the pastor says you can. You can carry in a church if you're... Oh, really? Yes, if the pastor says you can carry in a church, you can carry in a church. I see, I didn't even know that. I thought I thought even a police officer could not carry. No, well, the police officers can carry dang near anywhere because they, the the job they do. Man, now if he's off duty, uh, he probably has to ask permission just like the rest of us. But if your pastor says, if any of you have a concealed pistol license and want to carry, it, I am granting my permission. Or he may pull the ushers to the side and be like, look, if any of you guys pack heat, and you've got my approval but yes the the individual church leaders can decide if who and if firearms can be in the church otherwise the you can't so that would uh, if you if you know you go up to the reverend after church one day and be like look uh with all this stuff going on do you mind if i can still carry he can right then and there say you know maybe that's a good idea or no not in my not in this house you know that sort of They've changed that law then since I did all my schooling. So having church well, shootings. Yeah, right? but you did your schooling when dinosaurs roamed the earth. <laughs> so, me too. I'm just I'm just quoting from my CPL class, but that was that was a while back. All right. Um <laughs> The same CPL class that didn't tell me that if I open carry and I step into a vehicle, I'm breaking the law. So take it for what it's worth. Yeah, I thought it's, open it's, carry it's, was legal in Michigan. So Smeggy told me if I open carry, I'm walking down the street, no big deal. As soon as I get in a vehicle, it's considered concealed. Now, they didn't right. tell us that in the class. Now, I'm not saying that they lied to us in the class. I'm saying they withheld some really relevant information. Uh, so uh, I believe that what they told us in my class was all correct, but I think they needed to tell us more. So yeah, it's it probably has something to do with high, some highway law, highways, uh, state highways, and they pass no, all kinds of something about your vehicle, something about your vehicle concealing the weapon, even though you got this holster on your hip something about it i don't know it's just the same thing they told us that you could not leave your vehicle you could not leave your firearm in your vehicle but i've had people since then say yes you can so uh, i guess i don't know but i'm not i'm not about to okay so i did need to update everybody that the guy uh at the end of my unit in case anybody was following there was a guy who lives at the end of my condominium building that uh, he bashed out three of his back windows because his wife left him and to party in Vegas. And, uh, and then he shot out two windows and then there was like eight cops that showed up uh, and he got into a fight with eight cops and got all up to jail and uh, he hung himself on uh, uh, over the weekend. And uh, somebody figures out, so one of the ladies that lives around here is managed to save him somehow. Uh, she, she was walking by and saw something was wrong inside the unit and she went in and then she ran out, grabbed a knife from somewhere and cut him down. And He was unconscious for uh, a few days and he, I think he regained consciousness. I don't know what's going to happen to him. but uh, uh, So I originally thought that when there were seven cops that showed up on Saturday 
that, that maybe they were just serving, they disqualified him from owning firearms or something, but, uh, and that wasn't it. It was that he had hung himself. So uh, it's just, it's a crazy world that we live in a world with a bunch of crazy people. Uh, and, he was, uh, he was probably trying to escape the pain the only way he thought he, he could. And it's not the way you, you escape the pain. You, you endure, you get through it, you improve your life. You, 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 to well, try, not to, try not to make those mistakes again. Well, death is one way to escape pain. I mean, like if you're a terminal cancer patient or something. Well, yeah, but I mean, if the guy wasn't in that sort of condition and he had many more years on this earth and he had something to live for, even if he didn't have something to live for, he could find something to live for if he had to. It's not easy. It's not easy. I understand why people commit suicide. I'm not going to do it, but I understand why they do. Um, life, life isn't easy. Life isn't easy. That's why it's good to have friends, family, religion, if that's your choice. It's good to have a lot of things to help you get through those times where sometimes you just need somebody to talk to. So. Yeah, it's just what I was thinking is that the whole thing in Texas seemed to start out of some domestic situation, too. Yeah. Uh, and, and it was like. If they did, if they had him locked up for a while, but while he was being dishonorably discharged or whatever, it, it seems to me that people would need some counseling before they're released uh, to deal with whatever made them emotionally unstable in the first place that got them into trouble. Uh, and it's like they shouldn't let this guy out before somebody tried to talk to him at least. Uh, whether whether they would be receptive to talking to somebody is a whole other thing, but. I just think that uh, maybe these situations can be prevented with uh, some kind of relief counsel, uh, release, release, uh, pre-release counseling on how to deal with uh, just living, well, uh, and 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 whatever got and them in, in in into into whatever got them thrown in jail in the first place. Like if they were somebody would have talked to this guy that hung himself at the end of my building before they released him. Uh, then I'd ask him, well, why did you fight? Why did you want to fight eight cops at your door? <laughs> I mean, you know, if you shoot out two windows, the police are going to show up. Uh, and so, why did you try and fight eight cops? And it just and 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 just talk to him. Uh, and and and, uh, and they would have gotten to the whole thing with his wife. And uh, and it sounds and, good. Why you will find most insurance companies will not mental health counseling somewhere somebody has to pay for this and as of yeah, now it's another government it would be another government program i yeah. know uh, it's willing to pay for mental health right now well the other thing too is not all counselors are alike. I've seen different counselors over the course of my life, sometimes for the same thing, sometimes for different things. In my experience, very few of them were actually good, were actually, you know, gave me useful <laughs> advice or were willing to... Well, you were you ever suicidal, I mean, or homicidal? I mean... It, not, uh, not necessarily suicidal or homicidal, but dealing with problems is dealing with problems. And some of them didn't want to go into certain detail or they really were just about watching the clock, keeping you there for the 50 minutes or 45 minutes and then saying, well, we have to end now. And that was instead of, instead of trying to, you know, or, well, what do you think? If I, if, if it mattered what I thought, then I wouldn't be here seeing you. I'm here to see you. So some of them really, I don't think do as good a job as, as others. And yeah, so well, like, maybe, obviously it, it can be uh, treacherous. Like, I mean, look at the, the story within uh, Suicide Squad with Harley Quinn and the Joker. She goes in as a counselor and winds up as uh, <laughs> psychotic uh, uh, criminal. But well, um, I mean, it's like any other job. I mean, what does my friend always say? Even C's get degrees. You know, you may not be the best at it, but you're qualified. You've got a piece of paper. And and I mean, who counsels the counselor? So, well, what, what, I, I, all I'm trying to propose is a solution that would, I'm not saying who pays for it or anything like that. I'm just saying would counseling, pre-release counseling uh, have made helped these people? 
it might not have it might not have kept him from hanging himself and it might not have kept this nut bag from shooting up the church but it it's better than nothing it might it might not but might is better than not at all right yeah, it's, it is just another government program, and who's going to pay for it? And and we're already over twenty trillion dollars in debt. I understand the problem. But, uh, I don't have a solution, but I, other than free release counseling might have helped. Uh, it, it it just seems to me if it it would be really targeted that way if if there were some people who were arrested in a violent fashion, and then before they released, they had to talk to a, a counselor that actually gave a damn. Uh, and uh, it might help, uh, but anyway, that's it, it's better than gun control, which doesn't work. So, which is what they're going to go to eventually, because that's what they always do. Uh, so, uh, that was my two cents on that. I got the peanut butter, the pre-release counseling. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> What do you have against organic peanut butter, Dusty? Did we lose him? Oh, don't get me started. I don't want to talk about that subject. <laughs> Is this a farming thing that I wouldn't understand? <laughs> Is that that GMO thing? <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. I still don't know what that stands for, but I don't really care. So, yeah, don't talk about it's it. Just GMO oh, yeah. stands for genetic modified organism genetically modified organism yeah he's roboting so it's hard for us to hear you no but I, I you finished it up for him so hey go team okay yeah no we're good so all right fine I don't, I don't care if it's modified or not I'm good with it organic is a label that our government has created a lot of companies abuse it. Yeah, it doesn't mean me, what people think it does. I, I'm, I'm mean, aware. Of really that. organic. Look, for me, just just mean what you think it means. Right, it, but just, it's just still so you know, completely it, farmed. It's still that. Easiest example is in corn fertilizer. I use all the ingredients in my fertilizer are organic. However, since I blended into a uh, single number, like, you know, 992 nine, or whatever, and spread it as one product, because I don't have time to make three trips across the field, then it is not organic anymore. Ingredient is organic. Right. But just so you know, Dusty, I was just but, cruising through Costco. And they had, like, a, uh, their... Either pallets of peanut butter, and this was the cheapest one, because <coughs> it was their brand. It was the Costco brand, Kirkland. So that's why I picked it up. And for it was like, okay, peanut butter is decent prep, so I'll pick it up. <coughs> it was just economics. And I love peanut butter, so I eat a lot of peanut. Butter. Yeah, but try and explain what peanut butter is to somebody who's never had it, which was my point. To try and explain what Second Amendment freedom is to somebody who's never had it. It's the same as trying to explain pe what peanut butter is to them. It, it's So that's a problem I've had with people in Europe uh, who only know, who's, who just have that media filter of what America's like and don't understand what peanut butter is or why anybody would want to own a gun um, or why anybody should be allowed to own a gun. We're, we're over here, we're like, why should we allow our government to tell us what we can and can't do? So... Um, it's because we we are, we want to be the ones to tell our government what they can and can't do, not the other way around. But uh, so it's all about peanut butter. <laughs> uh, all right. I did I did a beer review. I have not posted it yet um, because I've been so busy mining Bitcoin over all last week on my laptop. I haven't wanted to turn it off. It hit like seventy five hundred dollars. Uh, I think a day just a day ago um, and it was pretty that's a pretty amazing rocket ride up to seventy five hundred dollars this year from like nine hundred or eight hundred or whatever it was at the beginning of the year to uh, 
7,500. Here we are in November. And uh, so I've been doing all that stuff. And uh, uh, oh, the Russian parliament, somebody, the Russian parliamentarians, who should, I guess, should probably just stick to selling, creating and selling fake dossiers to Fusion GPS. Uh, they said that, that they thought uh, Bitcoin could hit twenty or 40,000 <laughs> in the near future. Uh, but uh, I wouldn't really pay any attention to anything out of Russia. Uh, but it was pretty funny. There's an article about it. You could link it. There's a lot of stuff going in the world. Uh, we could. I wanted to talk about a little, some of it. Uh, let's see. Uh, going on... Uh, Trump in Japan asks why North Korean missiles were not shot down. He's talking about those missiles that were shot over Japan by North Korea. And basically, there were two reasons. They were, the missiles were too fast and too high, the, the, uh, too high altitude and moving too fast for the Japanese defense system. It, it, it wasn't threatening any Japanese territory. I mean, it flew over, but it just, it was an overflight, not a, they weren't targeting Japan. And... Also, the most disturbing part is Japan. It, it it would has they have basically constitutional restraints on using military force. So that means before they use military force, they have to convene a constitutional court. <laughs> and when there's a missile flying at you, you don't have time to convene a constitutional court. <clears throat> uh, okay, in the Gulf. Iran, uh, and uh, I'm just looking at Devka. This it's pretty uh, amazing week o over in the Middle East. Uh, Iran and Gulf nations prepare for war. Uh, sudden reshuffle in Iran's top army and naval commands, and uh, they are in over in Saudi Arabia. They're having all kinds of issues. They uh, uh, the over in Yemen, the rebels uh, or the people who the Saudis are fighting, the Houthis, shot a. Uh, Missile towards uh, Saudi uh, Saudi Arabia's capital Riyadh uh, at their airport, and they had a Patriot missile system shoot down the missile. But the missile was from Iran, and so Saudi Arabia is calling it an act of war. But it, it was shot by the Houthis, but Iran gave them the missile. So uh, it's the, basically if, the, if just look for if the oil prices. That's why the market went up today. Because oil is going up, because there could be a, a, there's a whole other without the U.S. saying anything about it, the, the Iranians and the Saudis and the Gulf are all ready to go to war, and that's they the, things are getting crazy. They arrested, they're arresting a bunch of billionaires in Saudi Arabia, uh, and and the whole thing with Qatar is getting spiraling kind of out of control. They don't like what someone Al Jazeera basically. Um, let's see. Lebanese prime minister steps down, uh, and basically Hezbollah and Iran are in charge of Lebanon. Okay, uh, a Saudi Arabian uh, prince, basically people who, could, who are control in Saudi Arabia are just a bunch of princes, like the royalty, and one of them was shot down in a helicopter when that missile was launched. Uh, let's see. Uh, Russian... Russian-made air defense missiles miss Israeli Air Force jets. I guess Israel Air Force has figured out how to defeat the uh, air defense missiles that Russia has placed there. Um, what else is going on? Syria fires missiles at Israeli Air Force flights as Russian defense minister heads to Israel. Well, that ought to be an interesting meeting. Uh, Iran backed Iraqi ultimatum to Kurds leave Kirkuk. First test for Trump's threat to Revolutionary Guards. All right. Well, like, we don't have enough problems with just North Korea. So he's supposed to meet with Putin at APAC in Vietnam, I think, uh, on this trip. You guys still out there, or am I am I roboting now? No, you're not roboting. 
Okay. Just check him. Uh, let's see. Is he stand out there in the external? Wait, one, Stan is saying that one, one of those Saudi princes that was arrested ties to Clinton and the Mandalay Bay ownership. I didn't know there was. He had. Well, those the Saudi princes that were arrested, I, they own a little bit of everything. <laughs> I mean, they're like billionaires, so they have holdings and everything. Uh, that's just how the stock market is. Um, I think that if there's a war breaks out in the Gulf, it'll affect oil prices. Sure, and the U.S. is a pretty, I think, oil self-sufficient. Uh, I think we're almost an energy exporter at this point. See Jesse James out there in the external, um, too. And Cycle Camp, Patrick, and Raphael uh, in the gun channel side. Um, oh, I got it. I ordered a new, I ordered, I have more than one knife inbound that I got off of Bud K. Not generally not the best, uh, source for knives, uh, but these, uh, uh, I wanted to share, uh, some of these knives. I got the one, I got a, uh, uh I got one that is just for fun. The, uh, the, it's basically like the, uh, the knife from, uh, 300, the movie 300. It's like the sword. I haven't got. I haven't gone out. Basically, it was on sale, so I'm gonna try and just screen share it with you. Let me dig up the website. Um, it's the Combat Commander. <laughs> I'm gonna get off of Debka. It's got too much stuff going on it. Let's see. Get to my knife folder. Um, I got the. So I got the U48. Um, and the combat commander. Probably take a while before they actually get here. Come on. Knives. I haven't got anything from zombie tools yet, but I'm putting so much time into cryptos lately. <laughs> Getting, I've been on Faucet Hub, uh, and, uh, just doing faucet claims and mining. Uh, and I'm not doing too much other stuff. Um, so, and basically, I, the, the, the more crypto was going up, the more I was mining it. Uh, just didn't make it claims, but let me screen share this. Um, this yeah, the M48 Cyclone uh, is on its way. It is. Okay, can you guys see this? I hope. Raphael said, it's on sale. Well, this one wasn't. Uh, I mean, you know, it's kind of on sale. Um, this one was just, looked too deadly. Triple spiraling. <laughs> it would just, that would just make a nasty wound if you had to stick it in somebody. And a bad guy. It just looks like a combat knife to me that I wanted to add to my arsenal of collection of knives. I'll call it a collection instead of an arsenal. <laughs> but uh, try edge spiraling fixed place. I saw this one. It's like, damn, that'll do it. Go ahead, Dusty. Don't think it'll gut a deer, but gut a deer, but it's it not, might kill a deer. It, yeah, it's not a skinning. <laughs> you would you would mess up. You would pierce the gallbladder or get bile all over everything with this thing. Um, but that's not what it's for. But uh, let, let me get let me get the one that was on sale that I just absolutely couldn't resist. It was like twenty bucks. So uh, I'm and I'm probably gonna redo the handle on it uh, if I could find that guy uh, on Swords. Where is it? I'll just type Combat Commander. Come on, you stupid thing! All right, Bud K. Is this the same site where you were looking at the black powder revolvers? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and that was the one you were surprised they wouldn't send it to Michigan for some reason. 
Yeah. Okay, right. it's this one. It's, they still have it if you if you want one in stock. This is like uh, if you saw the movie Spartan with Leonidas uh, at the Thermopylae, where 300 Spartans were rumored to take on uh, a million uh, Persians. <laughs> of course, their main thing was their shield to form their phalanx, the shield and their spears, but. I'll have to make do with just this sword. <laughs> it's, it just looked too cool. I think the handle, I'm going to have to have it redone. And one of the, We have one of the Forged and Fire champions in Kona, so I'm going to have to dig him up and put him put together a better, better handle for me. Um, but uh, it just looked too awesome. For 20 bucks, I wasn't going to pass. So I'm looking forward to that thing getting here. So anyway, enough with the. Let me just see what this. Since, have, since you love me to I sometime look up marbles, knives. It's a Michigan company that makes handmade knives. Right. Well. Nice. Right. Well, I just kind of spent my budget on. <laughs> Uh, well, you saw the shirt that I got, though, because uh, I'm waiting. I'll make a video with it when it gets here. But um, I should screen share the shirt because probably people are going to want that one. Um, let's, let's see. You guys are going to love this shirt because this is a gun channel it's kind of a shirt. If I could punch up that. Come on. Jesus, no, I don't want to talk. When you have a million screens open, it kind of slows everything down. All right. Um, come on, shop by category. Knives, cool stuff. That'd be in the pair of shirts. This one. Yeah, it's kind of a ridiculous price for a t-shirt, but I mean, I really like the graphics. So. <laughs> Hope you guys can see this. So yeah, I'm, I'm doing I'm, I'm doing an ammo run with this t-shirt just to see if I get any reaction. I need to find out what's up with Kona Guns, because um, he said he's trying to sell this, his shop by the end of the year. Uh, or he's going to, I assume it probably has a short lease or something on the commercial space he's running the shop out of, but uh, he doesn't want to sign another one, but uh, that's just my guess. I, I, he might be trying to sell it. He, that's what he told me. So, and he had a buyer that was interested. So I'm going to find out if we're going to have a gun shop. Uh, probably in the next week or two, I'll go down and see what's up, because it's going to suck if I have to drive all the way across the island just to buy a box of ammo. So, at least one more ammo run coming up in the near future. So anyway, that's that's basically most of the stuff that I got off of. Uh, 5K. I usually don't buy stuff from them, but I'm a sucker for a sale. I generally only buy stuff when it's on sale. Um, like when I bought my, uh, if I buy, I was waiting uh, for a sale, uh, and I guess Black Friday is coming up, so there probably will be a lot of sales for uh, when I bought. After I bought my Glock or any of my guns, um, I, I always wait for sale to, to buy a holster. I never want to pay full price, so I always wind up waiting uh, for accessories like holsters and stuff. Uh, and uh, sometimes it's a long wait, <laughs> but uh, yeah, a penny saved is a penny earned. So. Uh, I always wait for sales before I buy all my gun accessories. And black, when is Black Friday? Is that the day after Thanksgiving or something? I forget. Thanksgiving is coming up. Uh, and oh yeah, go ahead. Black Friday is the twenty fourth, right? I, I wasn't sure. That's why I asked. 
Um, I did want to say that uh, in the Bitcoin world, there is a hard fork coming up around the 15th. And there is going to be a new kind of Bitcoin. Uh, so I just thought I'd explain it to anybody that's interested. Uh, the old Bitcoin that we know, uh, they're making this new called SegWit times two. Uh, it's basically segregated witness and they're just expanding the block, the size of the block of data from four megabytes to eight megabytes and it's supposed to make the transactions faster and cheaper when you send Bitcoin from place to place. And whether it catches on or not will determine whether people use the new one or the old one. What is that? <laughs> I see Patrick out there. Made it home in one piece. Well, you didn't run over anybody on the way. I was, you know, I was watching uh, Fury, Mad Max Fury Road was on over the weekend. <laughs> it was, I really liked watching that movie. Um. <clears throat> So you you doing reloading there, Patrick? Is this mic on? He's still hooking up. Okay. So I heard that Dusty told me he uh, he hauled his hot tub to the dump. I thought it was uh, a trailer full of dryers. Yep. <laughs> and a trailer full of dryers <laughs> with holes in them. <coughs> I thought I was going to bug out to your hot tub. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> I still had it. I enjoyed that. It was real fun to go up there and have snow hitting you and being in that hot water. Yeah, I, I love that. Did that hot tub. I thought, thought I was going to bug out to your hot tub with the Glock. I just hide in the hot tub with a Glock, and the bad guys came over, just jump out of the hot tub and blow them all away, <laughs> or shoot from under under water with. Them. Because Glock can shoot underwater, so. There will not be ice at my house. Uh, Hawaii, you don't sound like you're doing so good. Are you having an allergic reaction to that organic Jack. peanut butter? <clears throat> no, it was just Jack and Coke. Uh, it went down slightly wrong. You sure? You're not, like, running a temperature? <laughs> your throat's swelling up? Or I mean, you need some of those GMOs? <clears throat> You want me to run to the store and get some GMO peanut butter? It might balance you. <laughs> no, I can get some jelly. Actually, I'm out of damn. I'm out of jelly. Well, I, like I said, I just went through Costco, up and down the aisles, bought the cheapest one. Because I, I just thought, thought, oh, peanut butter, preps, throw it in the cart, pretty much. And that was the cheapest one because it's their store brand. So, No, I'm not dying from peanut butter. Some people are allergic to peanut butter, but I'm not. <clears throat> so I think Patrick said uh, he was reloading uh, 308, some special kind of 308. Uh, in the text chat earlier. Patrick, if you're talking, we can't hear you. You're not showing muted. All we see is your face and your finger. <laughs> <laughs> Now we see your smile. Yeah, you're not showing muted, but uh, we can't. We're not getting any audio. Yeah, we can't hear you at all. We're experiencing technical difficulties. <laughs> We're always experiencing technical difficulties. <clears throat> this is Google. Uh, so you wanted to talk at some point about the all the Second Amendment rallies and stuff that the 
basically, I, I was watching Magnum Force, and I just took a break to check on uh, my sub feed and saw, like, just the last few seconds of Jared. Uh, uh, he had a very short, like, one-minute video um, at, uh, at the Maryland, I think, uh, rally. And I think Never Enough Ammo, Matt had one coming back uh, from a rally in Texas. Where? We still can't hear you, Patrick. We see you, but we don't hear you. Well, we don't know what's wrong either. <laughs> maybe, maybe your mic is like, has too many GMOs or something. <laughs> um. All right. So, uh, I'm I'm screen sharing here. Is it? Uh, let's see here. So, can you see the Capitol building? Mm -hmm. All right. So, this is the. Oh, now I hear something. Go ahead. No, but he just dropped out. All right. Are you presenting or? I am now. Okay, so this is a Capitol building in Lansing, and uh, you can see up. Well, you see up here, uh, it's a little foggy. It started out foggy that morning. The forecast was for really bad weather, but we were lucky. It didn't start raining until everybody was walking away. Um, there was nobody there at the Capitol building, obviously. Uh, let's see here. Except, let's see if I can. Does this thing? There are, that's, there's the police presence that was there, two state troopers. So right across the street is the state troopers headquarters. These guys were there. They were, they weren't doing anything menacing. They weren't, they were just chit chatting with each other. When the crowd was small, initially they were about this far away. When it got bigger, they got right up next to the crowd, but at no point did anything ever happen. Nothing, nobody got, got violent or got in the cop's face or anything like that. And then uh, at the uh, at the end of the day, we went on a march and uh, the police, one took the point and one brought up the rear. And so they were at either end of the march and they followed us around for the march. You can see these are the kind of people that, that were there. Some of them are, uh, are in camo. Some of them are just in plain clothes. You see this guy right here, he's got an AR-15 slung and it, it had a bump stock on it. Uh, there's a guy over here with an M1 Garand, a lot of AR-15s. Uh, probably the thing that was there most was open carry handguns. So this is when we we're standing up on the steps. We took a group picture, but some of the guys, like these three guys over here, they didn't want to get in the picture, and that's fine. Nobody was forced to uh, to get in the picture. And then we uh, we went around. We walked around the Capitol. And we stopped in front of this uh, the Hall of Justice. Uh, and we, uh, we, everybody took some pictures and, and whatnot. And you see these guys, let's see if, can I zoom in on this? I can't, I don't know if you can see right here, uh, zoom, how about if I zoom? So you can see these two guys here with the masks? Um, can you see that, Hawaii? Yeah. yeah. The ones holding yeah. the anarchy flag. So these are the uh, anonymous guys. And uh, they said that they were there because that they support the, uh, the Second Amendment, but they also support anarchy, so I don't know what that means. Why and, can't I see your pictures? I don't know, because your internet connection sucks. So here's the uh, here's the uh, <laughs> anonymous guys doing an interview at the end, and uh, that's great. Check out two they new took, albums. They took off their an, a mask for the interview? Why wear well, it? Well, <laughs> they took off their mask. They actually gave everybody a turn to go up there to speak, so different people were speaking, and uh, when they went up on the steps to speak, they did take off their masks. <laughs> Sean, Sean texts me and he says, they're not really anonymous. They'd never take off their masks, but these guys, they took off their masks. So, um, I don't know, call it what you will. Uh, let's see. Is there anything else interesting? Uh, this guy, he's here from a Michigan militia group, not the Michigan militia, like the Tim McVeigh, but it was the something or other militia. And, um, uh, he had the body armor on, everything else like that. And then uh, this guy right here in the middle, he's uh, Mr. Uh, what was he? He's a gun guy. 
gun guy channel or something on, on YouTube. I don't know. I've been told his name 12 times and I can't remember, but he's a Michigan guy. He knows Matt from never enough ammo. Oh, the firearm, the firearm guy, firearm guy. Thank you. Yes. So he was there and, uh, they also had a group there called Michigan open carry. Uh, let's see. Where's the, uh, blah, blah, blah. Let's see. They had a tent over there and you can see the steps. That's where they, people were doing their speeches and, uh, then we all took a group photo, but they had a little little tent, and they were, you know, having memberships there. They didn't push the memberships too hard. There was a guy there selling a book because uh, th this gentleman right here, you're here on his phone, this duffel bag that has feet. He has uh, a book that he wrote because uh, he used a firearm to defend. He was being a good Samaritan and was defending a woman who was getting attacked by two men, and one of them went back to the car, grabbed a gun, and he shot. Uh, both the men, he ended up going to jail for a year and a half before, before he got out of all that. So I think the book is probably to recoup some of his legal fees. He was telling us what it's like, you know, going through all that stuff. It's, it's really bad. I mean, uh, but he was there because he believes that we have the right to carry a gun and defend ourselves. So. Yeah. I imagine it was bad. Going to court sucks. Being in jail sucks. Paying a bunch of lawyers to argue over cases yeah. sucks. Yeah, here's our here's our march. We're just you can see it's all foggy and stuff out, but we did the march and uh, there was not really a whole lot of people out there to. Uh, here's the uh, <laughs> here's one of the anonymous guys taking a break. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, it wasn't it wasn't uh, like this major. Uh, what I don't uh, understand is is see, stop, uh oh stop sharing. Stop. There we go. Stop. Yes. Okay, you can stop presenting me. All right. What I don't understand is how come Dusty could see my peanut butter, but he couldn't see your screen share. I don't know. It's a Michigan thing. <laughs> All so, right. so it lasted about three hours. Uh, I counted 70 people, uh, but I might have missed a few. Um, they're the only people that we thought were against us were the anonymous guys, but they said they were with us. There were no anti-protesters there. The local news wasn't there. Uh, there wasn't any sort of disturbance or. You know. Yeah. If you want the local news to there, you have to beat somebody up or something. Yeah. Well, uh, nobody there seemed to be the kind of person to do it. I mean, even the guys with the uh, tactical beards and the body armor and the, the ARs at the low ready, uh, I mean, it was a little over the top, I think, but the cops didn't seem to be, they didn't seem to care. And, you know, uh, they looked scary, but really they were, they were okay. I mean, they weren't, they weren't saying anything, you know. I just, had to yell at somebody with a tactical beard the other day. <clears throat> so they basically, some new, new, a guy and his friend were moving into the condominium and first thing they did was walk on the, out to their lanai after they carried up a bunch of boxes and started smoking cigarettes. And my, our condominium complex has been officially registered with the state as a smoke free building. So I started yelling at him, <laughs> but, uh, and I just wasn't taking any shit. So, <laughs> but uh, whatever, I think they got the message that what they were doing was illegal. And if there's a designated smoking area, uh, about 50 yards up away from all the buildings uh, where they set up a nice area for smokers to go smoke and not fumigate or gas all the other tenants with secondhand smoke. And uh, so it was basically one of those who can yell the loudest things for <laughs> until they realized they were wrong. But uh, whatever. So what I took out of it was that um, next time I go to a rally, uh, well, for one, if it's in Lansing, I know where to park. Um, the The other thing is uh, I've never open carried a sidearm in Michigan, even though I'm for open carry. Uh, I've never done it before. Uh, you know, I, I did it in the military while I was on base. I was in uniform. It was It was my job. But... Uh, I put on the same cartridge belt with the same holster and same magazine pouch and same sidearm that I wore in the military. 
And uh, I can tell you this, it felt a lot heavier, but it still wasn't too bad for me to walk around and carry all day. But, you know, we, we, we get out of the, the truck in the parking structure and I put on the belt and I take the gun out of the case and I put the uh, magazine with the live ammo in the pouch and we go walking out of the parking structure and it's a Sunday morning. There aren't a lot of people. The weather's not so, so great. There aren't a lot of people out there and I'm not really thinking anything until I see two people and I'm thinking, oh crap, I'm open carrying and I know it's legal, but they may not know that. And that feeling you get the first time you conceal carry where you think everybody sees you, they think they, you you, every person you pass, you're thinking they're looking at you and they're looking to see if you're printing. That's the <laughs> feeling I got walking down the street with this nine millimeter strapped to my hip. And, um, you know, I was like, just, just be cool. Just be cool. Because, you know, well, the I, thing is you give it away. I mean, it's like, if I, I carry, if I carry my, one of my larger knives on my belt, I mean, the surest way to give it away is to keep checking it or pay attention. I mean, you just ignore it. I wasn't breaking the law, but I still got the, the same feeling the first time I legally had a concealed pistol license and legally carried concealed. The same exact gun, as a matter of fact. So I got the same feeling because well, it had been so Whether long. it's legal or, or illegal, I mean, the surest way to let anybody and everybody know that you're carrying is to keep touching your gun or, or looking at it or, or, I mean... No, I made every effort not to rest my hand on my holster, but that's what I used to do all the time in the military. And when I was walking next to that state trooper, I didn't even, I made sure that, you know, my hands are not anywhere near my waist and I didn't want him to be freaked out. Of course he wasn't, you know, we talked for a little bit and he didn't even look down. So whatever. But, uh, <laughs> you know, after walking around with it for a while, it was just old hat. It was like, yeah, this is just like when I was in the military, but uh, just a little heavier. That's all. Right. Well, you're a civilian now. You're not behind a plow. <laughs> no, but, you know, my thing is, if I did stand up there to say something, I might have said something like this. This is the same sidearm, same holster, same belt, same pouch that I wore in the military when I was on guard duty as part of my job defending everybody's freedom to have guns. Why should I not be able to wear this exact same rig with this exact same gun as a civilian. And that's what I was thinking about saying, but I decided not to go up there and say anything. So call me a wuss for wussing out. I don't know, but uh, it was a good learning experience. Uh, I definitely would go to another one. Um, hopefully I'm employed by the time uh, another one comes around, but, uh, and if I am and it comes down to work or that, I'm going to go to work first. But otherwise though, I would definitely go to another rally. It wasn't a big production, but, you know, maybe next time we'll have 250 people there or something. And maybe it will be. Who knows? Yeah, bring some friends next time, too. Well, I was uh, texting uh, people in other states. So I was, I was texting Jared, and I was texting Sean Pottery, and I was texting Travis, and the... Uh, the Lincoln, Nebraska one was starting about the time we were wrapping up. And uh, I guess they finished early in Boston the same way they did in Lansing. They probably had it reserved for the day and just ran out of speakers like we did. So by the time Jared got there, I guess it was over or there were only a few people hanging around. So that's my guess. Um, over on the YouTube side, New Throne Clay says, thank you for your service, Squib. And I second that motion. Uh, it's my it's my pleasure. There's you guys don't have to thank me. I mean, it's it's nice that you. He do. didn't have to thank you. Well, yeah, no, it's my pleasure. I'd do it again. I would I would do it again, without a thought. And and uh, that remark Trump made about um, those guys over in Africa, they had uh, targets on their back. I made the same statement 25 years ago when we were on liberty in France, so it's nothing new. And that was before there was a real big terrorist thing and then all this other stuff. I said, you know, you realize we stick out like a sore thumb walking through town. And over here, they don't they they don't have the same kind of laws and, and, and protections that we have in America. And if a terrorist wanted to kill an American serviceman on liberty, it would be easy to do because they know that we're through these same cities over and over again. Every six months, a ship comes through. I said, we're walking around with targets on our back. 
and here 25 years later Trump says the same thing and people are criticizing him for it but it's the truth when well, you Trump Trump bashing is like on uh, an immediate sport at this point I, whatever I, I, he says they'll bash him I'm only I'm only I'm only backing him up on it because I said it myself about myself 25 years ago and it's the truth when you enlist you take a risk it's just like when you decide to get into law enforcement you take a risk if you don't want to take that risk nobody is forced there's no draft you don't have to be a cop you don't have to be a marine so i chose that risk and i accepted the fact that i might get killed as doing something as simple as bar hopping in france because you do stick out like a sore thumb when you're overseas you just do so fortunately nothing nothing happened we didn't uh, we had some near misses but no no accidents where anybody got killed because that'd be more likely what would happen is uh, uh, somebody get killed in an aircraft crash um, and and uh, nobody got nobody get killed in, in, in any of the combat actions we were in that we were lucky there too but just the irony of being on liberty and you're just out on the town and you know some terrorist is able to spot you real easy that I, I realized these guys that wasn't them. They were they were on a mission. They were they were in there. They were training people in Africa. But still, the whole point is when you enlist or when you decide to get into law enforcement or become a first responder, you're taking a risk. If you can't handle the risk, don't do the job. Yeah, it's a big risk. Uh, don't I mean, especially if you're in a combat zone. But like in Vietnam, the you could be you have a target. I mean, if you go to a bar to get a drink or a restaurant, if you go to a restaurant that is known to be patronized by American servicemen, that whole restaurant is a target. And it happened in Germany once. It happened in Vietnam a lot. Uh, and and uh, people would just blow up a bar or blow up a restaurant or anywhere that there's an American. Very good point. Very good point. And and even civilian, you know, whether you're a civilian or it didn't matter, uh, it was uh, oh, it was a uh, all-out war uh, in Vietnam. Uh, and with ISIS, it's an, it's also a war of annihilation too. I think I talked about that. Uh, uh, had the, the, that pop quiz on the, the double envelopment last week uh, with Hannibal, the Battle of Cannae, but. Um, it's it, it's kind of like in a, with with ISIS, it's like an uh, end of the world apocalypse, uh, apocalyptic kind of all out war of annihilation. But uh, they're nuts. That whole all the, those ISIS people are completely crazy. Um, anyway, all right. So we talked about some of the rallies. Uh, Jared hasn't been on. I haven't seen him around. Um, so, and I don't think it? he's, uh, I don't think he's out of school for another 20 minutes, Man, I'm telling you what that time change, it just throws everybody off. When are we going to yeah. get rid of that? When is it going to daylight stop? savings times? Well, we got rid of it. It's it that we haven't had, there has never been daylight savings in Hawaii. So, uh, I don't know if somebody changed the number or, or on the gun channels schedule or just that you guys, fall back and spring forward uh, and I, I'm you basically we're starting three hours earlier than we used to and so uh, but let's look at the real issue here they want to pass 77 anti-gun laws why don't they just pass one law getting rid of daylight savings time wouldn't that be better for society I'm just saying wouldn't it make the place safer uh, I don't know about daylight savings time man but I, I think that think. is that is something that Congress should be putting their energy into, not all this other garbage. You mean like the budget, <laughs> tax cuts? Oh, don't worry Getting about the budget. It'll be fine. <laughs> tax cuts? Don't worry about the budget. They've been I, not I worrying like, about the budget forever. I yeah. would like some tax cuts. Right. Well, you probably will when you get your new job. Um, uh, maybe. Uh -huh. I'll be in a different tax bracket, that's for sure. <laughs> well, it's it sucks when the music stops and you don't get left without a chair, but uh, hopefully you could uh, make hay and get while well, the sun is shining still and find yourself something enjoyable, uh, relaxing work environment. I have oh, faith. I have faith. 
Are right. you totally off right now, Squib? Yeah, it's a bizarre feeling because for uh, 30 years, I've worked pretty much since I was 14, so it's kind of weird, but yeah. That's why I had to weasel a ride with Smeggy to the rally because uh, <laughs> it was his gas, so... Um, Hobo, hoboing it to Second Amendment rallies. <laughs> he's, like, he's like, it's no big deal. It's no big deal. I'm like, man, you don't understand. I can't justify additional expenses. That's why I, I can't come down to go hunting, Dusty. It's Part of it is the cost of the, the, the deer tag that I haven't bought yet. Well, I, why don't you do a practice bug out where you walked to, to Dusty's farm? Uh, yeah. Come on. I'll How buy far? the tag. I'm not you asking. Fun, no, I'll buy you a tag. No, I am not asking you to spend a penny <laughs> on me. No, no. But it's just the whole. Yeah, right now I got to be practical. So, yeah. Actually, I wish you was closer. I would put you well, to work I, for I, about two or three weeks. I wanted to say that it's really great that you do Wait. do have a bug out plan to get bug out at Dusty's because I'm sure you'll be stronger together if the shit hits the fan than you would be separately. Um, yeah, I mean, you know. I mean, so I feel like this show has actually done something because it brought you guys together. And, I mean, seriously, if the shit hits the fan, you'll be a lot stronger as a team. It's a lock and load, bringing people together. <laughs> hey, preserving freedom, one one gun channel's person at a time. Dusty, if I, if I was able to go hunting and I got a deer, whether it be at your place or my other buddy's place, if you could process the deer for me and I didn't have to pay a butcher, that would probably be the biggest expense. I will not pay a butcher. I cut up all my own deer, so. <laughs> you may give me a reason to shoot a deer. I may have to shoot one and bring it to you. Oh my goodness. Point being is uh, a freezer full of meat is uh, it might be it might be worth the risk, but uh, really I, I gotta I gotta wait and see how some things pan out. I know time's running out, but whatever. Anyhow, on to subjects that are, are probably uh, a lot more important. So I found something when I was ironically job hunting I had a uh, newsfeed post come up and I, I don't know why maybe it's something in my tracking cookies but the Marine Corps is looking for an anti-ship missile now that just does not does not fit the profile of the Marine Corps it's just kind of weird but um, yeah I'd be I, 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 I would just hopefully something will come across your feed that they they're looking for an expert on building Imperial whoppers yeah, I doubt it. So here, I'm screen sharing. Can you present? Oh, okay, let me hit the button one sec. Hit the button. Well, don't we have? I mean, we have anti-ship missiles. We have. I know. Uh, this is why I'm, uh, I, do, I just I don't see why the Marine Corps needs their own. This is they could spend their money on other stuff. So, all right, am I presenting? Yeah. Okay, so this is, you can see the, the chains holding down this. This is an FMTV. So this is a big brother, the LMTV. It's a five-ton truck. It's got the armored cab on it, and it's got the launcher on the back. I believe this is for uh, rocket artillery. So they're testing out a uh, surface-to-air missile. I guess they uh, th this is chained to the deck of an amphibious assault ship. I believe this is the fantail of a... a Amphibious assault ship, based on the way it looks. That that's are, the back end. Are the amphibi? Aren't the amphibious assault ships? Uh, they're part of the Navy, not the Marines, right? Right, but the Marines ride on them. So I guess if they wanted to bring along their own missile launcher and fire this, they were doing tests here. I'll stop. stop I mean, what's this uh, sharing? So okay, so, it's like is is so, if the Marines and the Navy get into a fight, they could sink a Navy ship or something, right? It's on board the USS. <laughs> on board the USS Essex, but uh, I thought the Essex was a, uh, a it's a flat top all the way around. The way this one looks, it, this looks like the back end of uh, one that... The uh, Essex used to be a class of aircraft carriers in World War II. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, it, it was, and, and the current amphibious assault ship is, uh, 
about the same. Am I still presenting? I'm not. Presenting. No, I turned it off. Okay, okay thanks. No, nope. good. Thank you. Um, anyhow, they looks like they chained this thing down to test it out. But something about they were firing at ground targets. Yeah, this is a uh, LHD LHD two. Okay, this is a uh, Tarawa class. So this is a um, no no wasp class. Sorry, wasp. Oh, this is a newer newer one. This is uh, landing uh, ship helicopter dock. Is the Essex. So anyhow, um, I'm not seeing any pictures, so you're not presenting. No, that that's fine. I was just looking up or the uh, blah 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 blah. Yeah. No, no. See, doggone it. All right. So if you read the heading of the article, and you don't have to present me to do that, it says aboard the amphibious assault ship Essex. But the back end of this, this this doesn't look like the flight deck on the Essex. Uh, daytime launch of blah, 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 blah. And then it says detachment of Marines with Camp Pendleton Base, 5th Battalion, 11th Marines, set up the vehicle born launch system on the flight deck of amphibious transport dock, USS Anchorage. Now that's what this looks like. This looks like uh, um, uh, an amphibious transport dock. It's got a smaller flight deck in the back, so it looks like a conventional ship in the front with a small flight deck in the back. Speaking of Camp Pendleton, uh, the, have you heard about the problem around San Diego uh, from Mexico? They've, they've, the, uh, basically, the Tijuana is not apparently, I guess all the water sewage treatment plants have either broken down or are no longer funded by the government because they're just dumping raw sewage in, out of Tijuana into the ocean, and it's all flowing up the coast to San Diego. And it's just the next time Marines practice assaulting, it'll be through a bunch of Mexican sewage. And that says they practice assault in the beach. Great. Wonderful. <laughs> well, this says that... Um, so and Jerry Brown isn't doing shit about it. I mean, so, but that's California. Governor Moonbeam. Go ahead. So they, they were firing this at a target 70 kilometers away. So what, uh, 70 kilometers, what, a kilometer is 2.2 miles? Right. I don't have my no, no. Two point two, two point two kilometers is a mile. So this is about what forty, thirty five, forty miles away. I'm, I think, or I'm getting it backwards. I don't know. Who uses metric anyhow? Uh, let's see. Blah blah blah. <laughs> it, the strike conducted during Exercise Dawn Blitz on the Southern California coast uh, marked a big first for the Marine Corps. Uh, Marines interested in uh, significant capability of an anti ship. Uh, missile, blah, blah, blah. I mean, that's the Navy's problem. Yeah, I know. Right? That's just it. I don't get it. I mean, I'm still, what? The sea base experiment, blah, 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 take place in October. Self contained, whole vehicle launch. Just, just, uh, I had a question for you guys. Uh, uh, just to finish off on that Texas thing, because you're in the military, I mean, are, are, are you allowed to buy a, a firearm after you if you have a dishonorable discharge? Because that's what that guy had. And so I'm we like, talked we talked about this in an early watch. If you have a dishonorable, you won't pass a forty four seventy three. Yeah, so, but he did. He did. He bought his at Academy. Well, that's just it. What we were talking about this morning, and I don't, I didn't follow up to find out, is if you have a bad conduct discharge or an other than honorable, those are not dishonorable discharges. So they were, when we were talking, they were thinking he had a bad conduct discharge. See, there's five discharges. Somebody said there's a sixth one. Dano actually talked to me about this once, and I still don't understand it because I've never seen it. But I'm, I'm, I'm not disputing it. I just remember learning about the five in boot camp. And only one of them is dishonorable. So it doesn't say on the 4473, did you get a bad conduct discharge? It says on the 4473, did you get a dishonorable? So if you have an honorable, a general, an other than honorable, or a bad conduct, none of those are dishonorable. So I don't know if he just got a, a bad conduct discharge. But if you don't need a 4473 to buy a long gun from a private owner. He bought it at Academy. Right, uh, he bought it at Academy. But let's just say he had a dishonorable. And he just decided he was going to buy one off of a private owner. How's it going to stop him? That's why I think we should have the ability to run a NICS check if we want. We don't need to have a law that says there needs to be a universal background check. What we need is, as citizens, if we want to run a background on somebody, we should have the ability to do it at no cost, no questions asked, with no delays. So if somebody gives you their driver's license, you call the FBI, NICS number, punch in and say deny or proceed. 
and that's it. No serial numbers, no nothing. It's just, and then it's up to the individual if they want to do that. But right now, the only place I know that allows you to do that is Nevada. They will uh, look them up for you if you ask. But Stan, L Stan says that uh, on the YouTube side, one mile is 1.6 kilometers. Just as you were asking earlier. So Okay. So there we go. We get a conversion from Canadian. Thanks. But... <laughs> Uh, what you're saying is if I give you my name and info and you ran it, it's probably going to come back that I'm a wanted felon, which I'm not, but there is somebody else that has my same name. Oh, right. Yeah, you were telling me there's somebody else. Okay. Else I, under, I understand that, but I'm not saying to make it a law. I'm saying to make it an option. I know you. So if you wanted to sell me a gun, I know you, I wouldn't even think about it. But right now, if I didn't know you and I wanted to do a private transaction, but I wanted to know if, you know, you, or at the very least, can I at least call and give the gun serial number to say stolen or not stolen? Something like that. I think that should be available to us at no cost. And there's, and there shouldn't be anything in there about tracking or anything else like that. I think it should just be something that's given to us for free. And it's up to us to decide whether, look, man, if I'm buying something from my brother, I don't need to run a NICS check on him. But if I meet somebody at a gun, sh gun show and he's got something and he's, he's trying to sell it, if, I, if I'm like, I don't know this guy from Adam, or if he doesn't know me from Adam, he, you know, he's got a, he's got an old, uh, he's got an old mill syrup that I want. And I'm like, Hey man, how much for that? And he's, you know, gives me a price and I'm okay with it. And he goes, well, hold on. Let me see your driver's license and I'll call in real quick. And he gives my driver's license number and it comes back. He goes, Hey, you're a good guy here. Let's, let's do, do a deal. I don't see a problem with that. What I see a problem is if they track the sale, if they charge a fee, if the thing's not available pretty much 24 seven, uh, if it does says anything other than deny or proceed, if it says deny, you should have a way to appeal that and get your name. You know, I mean, Dusty, if your name is making is, it available to anybody, could have a downside because it could be used for purposes other than it's intended. All you uh, do is say Joe Smith, driver's license number, blah blah blah, and it says deny or proceed. That's all. Yeah, it but says. people could use that for if somebody applies for a job. And like, if like, they does, already does, look at your does, Facebook posts when you apply for a job. You. Yep. No, I don't. And, I don't use Facebook, so. I mean. Whatever. I'm just. Why saying. that is used? I mean, you're going to do the same thing. If Squid goes someplace, they're going to run that information, and. Either, but, well, before before you sell a gun, do they look look on Facebook? <laughs> all I'm saying is, all I'm saying is they should they should. Have, oh they oh should yeah. Have, they should have no universal background checks for private sales. But as citizens, we should have access to the same same system or better for free if we choose. We want to run a background and we want to say, look, I was I was being more the law says I don't have to do this, but I chose to do it anyhow. Then you're you know if you're going above yeah, and beyond. The problem you have the problem you have though, you you add the for free. And we do not offer free in this economy. Nothing in this world is free. You pay for everything in the end, one way or the other. It's what I'd like to see. It'll probably never happen. Oh, well. Next subject. <laughs> you're right. I mean, uh, it's, you're, you're in a dream world, but the for free is what's going to kill your dream. Nothing is free. I did want to say I saw a cycle camp in my... YouTube feed had a Milser rifle video. Um, let's see if I can find it in my YouTube feed. Good I, test. I found that selfie stick cycle camp said was at Dollar Tree, but I haven't attached it to a tripod yet. I see you got a French Berthier 1907 15 upgraded rifle MLE 1916. Nice. A 1907 rifle. Wow. Hey, Raphael said we could have Mom's Demand Action pay for the background checks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good job, Raph. Well, 
All right, anything else we have to talk about this week? No, I'm good. I screen shared my two knives. The peanut. What was our topic today? Uh, just describe what free describe Second Amendment freedom to somebody that, that in Europe that doesn't have, didn't grow up with it. That that led me into describing what peanut butter is. How, how about how went about went off onto GMOs? I mean, just really because basically, if because if you're ever on a chat with somebody from Europe who doesn't understand. Just didn't grow up in America, then who's been told all his life that people who own guns are bad and guns are bad and people that own guns are bad. Then, so describe freedom to somebody from Europe uh, who to just or where it's not as as uh, they don't have the right uh, to bear, keep and bear arms. Uh, so, it's, it's like trying to explain kilometers to somebody from America. Did we talk about H? We did in the pre-chat, and you missed it. <laughs> it was we had a very uh, uh, the Canada restaurant you're talking about. So I don't we'll even want to go there. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll save it for the after chat if you want to babble about that. Um, and but me and Scoob no, went in, I really in the pre-chat. I really don't care. I just curious. <laughs> All right, um, but you are planning on going to I Canada don't want anytime soon. It doesn't waste off. <laughs> Uh, all right. Um, anybody got any you know, gun stuff going on? Any new guns, rebuilds, refurbishes? Uh, hey, Stan says that you can pay for the background checks with Bitcoin. <laughs> well, uh, Bitcoin hit seventy five hundred. Uh, it would be cool. I like I said, there's a fork coming up around the fifteenth, uh, based on the block number, oh. not on the date. The What's pool that? is coming. The pool is coming. Oh yeah, baby. I hope so. That infinity pool. But <laughs> but I, I like I said, I've banned under underage girls from my pool so your daughters can't come until they're eighteen. So <laughs> there's no underage girls allowed in my hey. infinity pool. <laughs> you can bring your wife, but <laughs> uh ah. What your wife isn't fun and uh, all right. I didn't. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. You implied it. <laughs> I'll let her beat you up after if she's listening to this well, part of the chat. Well, she stopped me from meeting Squib this weekend. They wanted to go and meet up with everybody in Lansing, but you were probably she did not like the idea. So she said you were being an an a uh, non-compliant patient again. <laughs> Yeah. How did you know? Because <laughs> I think you told me last time at an after chat or something <laughs> somewhere. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's all—it's the old guys. Thought that it was more. You robot. She a little. thought I would get in trouble. Thought that I trouble. would get in trouble if I went to Lansing. I'm what kind of trouble can you rally, get Rally, protest. Okay, she, so the, the guy she with... She typed rally and protest as trouble. It wasn't a protest at all. The guy with the tactical beard, the body armor, the digital camo, the uh, the the boots, the, the, the low-ready slung AR with the bump stock on it, when uh, the... Um, Anonymous guys called it a protest. He said, "No, this is not a protest. This is a peaceful assembly." So, and he was right. It was a peaceful assembly. So there, I mean, there was a chance that somebody was going to do something stupid, but nothing even close to that happened. It was, it was so, it was almost a non-event. And I'm not trying to downplay it. I'm glad that this, this, this happened, even though it was a very small. Uh, uh, showing of people in all these different states but still it was just for some people it was a good um it was a good warm-up for maybe something bigger later well yeah it didn't seem like a very big crowd from what and, you're telling me no but 
my wife knows me. She knows sometimes I open my mouth when I shouldn't, and sometimes I say things I shouldn't say. So she just she did not think that was a place I should be. Yeah, you would get on the mic and start talking about GMOs and stuff, and <laughs> get off topic. Of why there was a rally. <laughs> my brain was thinking, which is kind of usually what I do. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but I guess... And that's what she was scared of, that I would get to that rally or protest or whatever, and I would say something I shouldn't say, because that's kind of my personality sometimes. Of a quiet person, but sometimes I do say too much. There was nothing even close to that going on. Even the two kids from Anonymous that were stumbling over their words and couldn't agree on anything, even though they were there together. Um, that was what there were a few people that said a few things in an angry, angry tone towards them to try to to get them to kind of. I, they were like some some of the the pro two A guys were trying to get the uh, uh, anonymous guys to I think fight, and uh, it didn't even come close to that. They just they they got it, the the people asking questions got heated, but the two kids up there were very calm when they responded. I mean, I'm not trying to give them too much credit because they're just some kids with some crazy ideas, but um, that's the closest it got to anything there and it was only like two or three questions and when they realized that they're not going to get these guys to to get all flustered and whatnot they just let it go um other than that it was um yeah just a bunch of people standing there and 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 uh, the people that went up on the steps and spoke just they talked about their experiences or they talked about why they were there or something no, so I, I wanted to ask you, uh, we got Veterans Day coming up. I think we just had a, there was a, on the other side of the island, they had a Veterans Day parade already over the weekend. Is there going to be anything like that where you guys are? Or? Uh, there's a national holiday. Hey, Squib. Holiday. Well, I'm, I Did know. Did you spot it? Omar's? Uh, No. So I don't know where that at it is at. So is that I did not did not. Oh, that's where I really wanted to take Smeggy. We could have had a lot of fun if we, and we could have took him into Omar's. What's Omar's? Any hours. Let's see here. Um, Near Capitol. I have spent oh. many hours then. Okay, um, I did a review. I'll post it of of that uh, one of another Kona Brewer brewing beer. It an IPA called Hanalei uh, Kona Brewery uh, Company. It's an IPA with uh, uh, the, the, the. It was they, they used uh, uh, guava, um, which I could d detect the guava um, orange, which I couldn't. Detect and and grapefruit, I think, and which may be a tiny hint, but mostly it was seemed like just from the aroma, it was mostly guava, um, and uh, it had a nice, but uh, it's all, almost like an undertone. Oh, we lost. Dustin. Okay, it's a, do we lose him? I think so. Yeah. Okay. Well, here, uh, can you see my screen? Yes, sir. Okay, so we didn't go to Omar's, but Smeggy got his beer, so don't worry. <laughs> what kind of beer is that? Labatt. Labatt. Okay. Labatt. Canadian. But yeah. Good. Labatt's that, blue. Which kind is that? Labatt's blue, or just said I'll have a Labatt, so they brought him that. I'm just probably Labatt blue. So yeah. there, you, uh -huh. there you go, Stan. There's some Canadian beer, a. Eh? Yeah, so I got a beer review. I just have to upload it onto my computer and upload it. It's coming up on uh, Hanalei Cup by Kona Brewing Company. And I'm waiting for them to come out with a Kua Bay uh, beer. Um, uh, they, they have it at the at the pub up the street, and they, there's an article that came out a month ago in the paper that says it's going to be available in bottles. But I have, I've been looking for it, and 
I have not seen it uh, around town yet. Uh, and Kua Bay is a, a nice, really beautiful little bay up just about uh, five miles up the road from here. And uh, I, I hope to do a beer review like at Kua Bay on that one. But um, anyway, so we lost Dusty. Anything else you want to say before we wrap up uh, tonight's show? No, I'm ready for bed. <laughs> you're ready for bed. I'm ready for bed. Yeah, you're, you're you're not. So you're not working. You go to bed this early. I mean, yeah, I still get up. I still do stuff. I mean, do work around the house, run errands, fix stuff. I I fix the four wheel drive on my truck on Saturday. Uh, I started getting uh, phone calls and emails about jobs today, but just because I'm getting phone calls and emails doesn't mean I'm going to get the jobs. But yeah, I, I stayed busy. I popped into early watch here and there, but for the most part, I just listened and, and was doing housework in the background. So I'm keeping myself busy. I'd rather, I'd rather get up in the morning and get my lunch together and drive off to work and clock in and, and fix something at work than, than here, but eh, whatever. <laughs> All right, we got Dusty back, but Dusty missed the picture of beer. Maybe you could put up that beer picture again for him. <laughs> Even though I don't think it's, it's probably having internet issues. All right, um, just quick check the externals one more time before we wrap. Yes, I am. Hey, Squib, would your wife let you spend two or three days here? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure why. What's up? Well, I'm I'm just saying I have work that I could hire you to do. Work for a while. Dusty, I don't want to take your money. I'm not just <sighs> well, Maybe if you paid you in Bitcoin instead of money. <laughs> and I would definitely It's really not, work. not a charity. It's not a charity offer. Not a charity. I mean, well, I don't know. You need some help. So I could be a ranch hand. Finally. About. Um, something to think about, okay? I'll think about, but uh you can text me about it or something. So can you see the beer? He, he, obviously Dusty needs need some help with uh building those uh hedgehogs. Hedgehogs, right. <laughs> Or Stan is saying that, that looks good. Some, some something is owned by Inter Interbrew. Uh, which beer company? Uh, Labatt's. Labatt's Bat is owned by uh, Budweiser. Got bought by a foreign company. So yeah, I, I could see the Canadians getting bought out by. Yeah, can oh, yeah, you, can you see that, that, Dusty? Can you see when I'm talking? Can you see? Dusty. I ever had terrific. Okay, go ahead. Can you can you see the beer on the screen, or you still can't see the screen share? Yeah, I see beer. <laughs> okay, see, Smeggy got his beer, so. So that's Smeggy's beer. Yeah, I had Pepsi because I had a firearm, so Smeggy did not. So, <laughs> we were responsible, responsible so, gun owners. So you took him in Omar. No, that beer in Omar's. No, this is Buffalo Wild Wings. <laughs> oh. Okay. <laughs> Did you see Omar's? No, we didn't. We didn't. We walked around. We drove around first. I told him to go the wrong way down a one-way street, and then... <laughs> oh, you were driving the wrong way on a one-way street? It's like, okay, so I said, okay, this is what you need to know. Don't take any directions from me, and don't ever loan me your chronograph. So... <laughs> Uh, other, other than that, um, after we parked, we walked around a little bit to get to the Capitol, and uh, we passed one place called the Tap and Something. Tap and Something, but uh, no, we didn't see Omar's. That's something for another time, I guess. Double Tap would be a good name for a bar if you have so, <laughs> You was really nowhere near the Lansing Center then. You know, I used to go to Lansing all the time, but not that part of Lansing. So that was the first time I've ever been to the Capitol building. It's the first time I've ever been that far downtown. So, yeah, I really didn't know where the hell I was. Plus, the fog didn't help. So It's a lot harder okay. for me to get to the Capitol building because I I, I'd have to hop a plane to get over there. <laughs> we have a 
government See, building. And he now, loved- like, if I was, if I was going to come to meet you guys, I would have probably came in Logan Street, and I would have come to Michigan Avenue, and I probably would have parked either in one of the parking structures or right there along the street on Michigan Avenue, Lansing Center. We tried to park on Michigan Avenue, and we found a spot, and it was 25 cents for every 10 minutes. Uh, Wow. We lost him again. All right, so we're going to wrap up this chat for tonight. Uh, Maybe Dust will make it back into the after chat. Um, Thanks, everybody, for coming on on Gun Channels and on the YouTube side. We really appreciate your support. And uh, you can support us by... You can support us by sending Bitcoin to the address in the video description. (laughs) God bless Gun Gentles. We'll see you next week. See ya.